In the veterinary technology program, uh, we have a very robust service learning program. We have worked with several animal-based nonprofits. As the director of the veterinary technology program, we have to teach veterinary technicians how to compassionately care for animals. Service learning is an approach to teaching content for students in courses, like the course with uh, Dr. Wells here. Students learn skills, theories, and they're able to apply those skills and theories to the service of others. Uh, last count, I think we're approaching 300 courses a year. We've been very fortunate to be able to partner with organizations like SBCA Cincinnati, where we go in and um, provide wellness care, vaccinations, heartworm tests, leukemia tests for cats. And then we also provide the spay neuter surgeries at no cost to the nonprofit, the SPCA Cincinnati, and that makes those animals more adoptable when we return the animal to um, the SPCA for adoption. The other big one that we've highlighted in this service learning class is an organization called Pets in Need, and that is a low income veterinary service. And so this is a wonderful opportunity for our students to be able to interact with clients who are not usually of the same socioeconomic status as them, or, you know, they may have physical disabilities or even mental challenges. And our students have to interact with those clients just like they would in a regular veterinary clinic. So they're learning about all of those factors, along with being able to practice their skills and learning how to be an effective and compassionate veterinary technician. Really at the heart and soul of service learning is trying to build bridges between the campus and the community. And usually that's with people that come from very different backgrounds. Whether you're black or you're white, you're gay or you're straight, you're poor or you're rich, if you have a dog, you can identify with another person that owns a dog or a cat or any pet. I think that's another reason why your program stuck out is because it's a very unique way to build those bridges between UC and the community. It really is a win-win, um, both for our students and for those nonprofit animal organizations. This is one prime example of where even what we used to call the regional uh, campuses, UC Blue Ash, UC Claremont, have in many ways been leading that charge for many, many years. So it was very easy to recognize UC Blue Ash and Dr. Wells with this Jack Twyman Award. So uh, you may know that Jack Twyman was, he's a UC graduate and played basketball for UC. While he was at UC, he became friends with a fellow teammate named Maurice Stokes, an African-American. Jack Twyman was white. This is in the 60s at a time where racial division was maybe at its peak. Maurice Stokes was injured and had a traumatic brain injury. Jack Twyman and his family decided to basically be the caretakers for Maurice and his family for the rest of his life. And the university wanted to recognize him and recognize the legacy that he brought. We'd like to recognize other Bearcats that go above and beyond to not only support their, their colleagues and their teammates, but also the community around them. This uh, year's nominations were the most competitive that we've had. The most of them and the caliber of each of the courses were fantastic. I think what stuck out with Dr. Wells' course is that the longevity that they have been participating in is one, one thing. And just the sheer reach of the amount of students and the amount of organizations or the amount of people in the community that are being in, impacted was pretty impressive. I'm not the only one um, doing this program. Um, all of the faculty and staff in my department are fully invested in these courses. I want to recognize all of the people in my department because they work fully in these classes and, and work with these students every day at these off-site community partners and also on-site with the animals um, at our program and in Blue Ash.